أصلي عليك وكل الوجود صلاة وشوق إليك أصلي عليك وكل Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Qad aflaha man zakkaha That successful indeed is the one who purifies this nafs You are fear for Allah but you also fear other people? No Walla yakshawna ahadan don't fear anybody else illa Allah except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's telling us good words are better. Good words, words of advice is better than the one who gives charity but followed by reproach. So there are different levels of tests and Allah decides who he's going to test. The first level of testing of course is with our own nafs to overcome that, to control that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa adamu bayna al-ma'i wa al-teen faqad qala Allah wa tabaraka wa ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Kareem wa al-Furqan al-Hamid a'udhu billahi min al-Shaytan al-Rajim bismillahi al-Rahman al-Rahim wa al-Asr inna al-Insan lafi khusr إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق الله وصدق الرسول ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أما بعد Indeed, we have been blessed with Islam and with Iman. Such a thing that we have been blessed with, that if we didn't have it, only Allah alone knows how we would have been. It is true Islam and it is true the Iman that we have. It guides us through a course of thought and a course of thinking. It pushes a person towards doing things in a particular way. Had it not been for this Islam and had it not been for this Iman that we have and we possess, then all different scenarios and all different things will have popped in our minds how to behave and how to do things. Because we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because we have been blessed with this Islam, we believe in something called Athab al Qabr and punishment in the grave. Had we not had this Islam with us, then we'll have not been believers in punishment in the grave. We have done nothing to prevent ourselves and safeguard ourselves from these punishments. Had it not been for the Islam that we had, then the way and the manner that we use the washroom. It will have been contrary to how it is we actually use it today. It's only through the Islam that we have been blessed with. We have been given a way to use the washroom to be prevented from the punishment in the grave that we believe in through this Iman and through this Islam. And when we recognize and when we understand the greatness of this Iman and the greatness of this Islam, it demands from us a different mentality and a different type of thought. So much so an individual now, when he has believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, times in his life, now it has different significance and different importance. A man he has wealth. When the time of Dhul Hijjah is approaching and coming close, he knows, okay, I have now to go for the pilgrimage and go for the Hajj now. 
times in his life, he knows that Ramadan is approaching and Ramadan is coming. Some sort of preparation needs to be there only because of this Iman and the Islam that he possesses and he has today. Had it not been for these things in our entire day and on our entire night, will have not been spent like how we spend it now. We will not have been getting up early in the morning to bow our heads before Allah. Neither will we put ourselves in situations to get our Isha prayer before we go to sleep. None of that will have been objectives and goals in our lives at all. It's only through the Islam and the Iman that we have. These things have become a part and a parcel of our lives now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed different times throughout the year whereby an individual he may be able to reap and he may be able to gain from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when other people they have different times that they have their festivities be it at December or be it at Easter the different times of the year they organize themselves and prepare themselves for these occasions a Muslim just doesn't have only one. Rather, throughout the entire year, Allah has placed different times for him to reap and benefit and get close on to him. Usama radiallahu ta'ala says to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, O Nabi of Allah, I see you fasting. In this particular month, and I have never ever seen you fasting in any month besides this month. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he responds to Usama radiallahu ta'ala and he says, Oh Usama, he says, يَغْفُلُ nas anhu." He says, humanity are unaware of the significance and the greatness of this month. And he says, this month is because, why it is so unaware? Because it's بَيْنَ Rajab wa Ramadan." says the people are unaware of this month that Shaban which we are in. People have hardly any significance about this month because two giant months are on the two sides of it. Rajab which is a sacred month, Ramadan which is to come. So nobody really takes any attention with the one in the center. Nobody takes heed with this one that we are presently in now the month of Shaban. That's why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says to Usama, يَغْفُلُ nas anhu. The people are unaware of the greatness of this month. He says, O Sama, the amal of humanity are presented before Allah in this month. So therefore, I wish and I love to be fasting so that when my records are presented to Allah, I will be in a state of fasting now. That is why, O Sama, I engage myself in these extra ibadah during this month of Shaban. Allah may explain concerning this tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because of the popularity of certain things, people adhere and people stick only to those. And they neglect and they don't look with an eye of enthusiasm towards other things at all. Thus they lose out on such occasions. Take for instance, a man he has a shop. A small shop he has. All the items that you need are present there. His prices are very good and very cheap. Every single thing is at your convenience in this one shop. But nobody knows about him. He hardly advertises. He is just on the corner. Nobody has time with him. The big mall, everybody rushes to there. Only to realize the prices of all the items there are more expensive than in the simple shop. Had they gone towards the shop, they would have gotten all that they needed and all that they required. And the prices for them would have been cheaper. But because it's not famous, nobody goes there. Nobody pays any attention to there. Allah may explain, similar is the case with the month of Shaban. Because they are towered by these two great months on either sides. The month of Rajab is such a great month. And the month of Ramadan, which is to come. The sales that go on in the month of Shaban, we lose out on them. We hardly exert ourselves in doing any of it at all. So therefore we miss the opportunity of this seal only to regret later on. 
And ulama explain concerning this one tradition of Usama radiallahu ta'ala. Another great point. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, يَغْفُلُ النَّاسَ عَنْهُ That concerning this month of Sha'ban, many people are unaware of it. However, this was the month that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to exert himself. Ulama explain that any time people become unaware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a particular time, and you exert yourself in the obedience to Allah during that time, Allah rewards you tremendously for that action that you do at that time. So why the tradition in Tirmizi Sharif, where the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions, and he explains to humanity, whosoever enters into the marketplace, and when he enters into the market, he says, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ يُحِي وَيُمِيت وَهُوَ الْحَيْ لَا يَمُوت بِيَدِهِ الْخَيْرُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Whosoever were to say this simple statement, whenever he will enter into the marketplace, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this individual towards his hasanat and towards his good deeds account, one million rewards are written. In those accounts in which his bad deeds are there, one million sayyat and one million evil deeds are wiped out. And with regards to his stage in Jannah and his stage in Paradise, one million darajat and one million stages he rises up towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is he getting this reward? Because in the marketplace, it's a place that hardly has the remembrance of Allah. Hardly has anything connected to Allah. Rather, it's a place filled with masiyat and filled with the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in such a place, if you are able to recognize Allah and remember Allah, Allah rewards you tremendously for it. Abu Zar radiallahu ta'ala, he mentions one tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, there are three individuals who are very beloved to me. He says the first individual who is very beloved towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that individual who a poor man, he comes towards the people and he asks them for something and everybody turns him away. And then one individual secretly he goes and he fulfills all the needs of this individual. Abu Zar radiallahu ta'ala says, this man is very beloved to Allah. Says a second individual who is very beloved to Allah is that man who is fighting in the path of Allah and all of his comrades have fallen Yet still, he still sticks it out in the battle until he is either martyred or until victory comes to him. This individual, solitary, alone, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he is very beloved to Allah as well. And the third individual is that individual who travels by night. And there is nothing more beloved to him at this point in time except sleep. Everybody goes to bed. However, he stands up in Endurance towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, zealousness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reciting the ayats of the Holy Quran, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this one individual is very beloved to Allah. In all of these scenarios, everybody at that point in time was unaware. Nobody knew about the significance and the greatness of these timings. That's why these individuals excel in being the greatest in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know from our hadith as well, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wanted to delay the Isha prayer until one third of the night has passed. Because until that time, everybody becomes unaware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because it would have been difficult upon the Ummah, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't do that. However, on one occasion, Sahaba were waiting for the Rasul. They waited for the Rasul. And they waited for the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until finally he showed up. Then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed the Isha prayer with them. And then he told them that there is nobody on the face of the earth again who at that moment was in your ibadat and was in your remembrance. You have been exalted and you have been placed to such a pedestal because you alone were in ibadat at that point in time. 
Similar is the month of Shaban that we are in. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, يَغْفُلُ nas anhu. Humanity don't know about this month at all. They show very little reverence towards this month of Shaban. They hardly ever exert themselves in this month of Shaban that we are presently in. So therefore, one of the lessons that we learn from the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to exert yourselves in the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month you are going to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for doing ibadat, especially when nobody else is doing ibadat, one of the fadilat and one of the virtues for that is that now you start to do your ibadat and you do it with a lot more ikhlas and you do it with a lot more sincerity. Imagine you stand for tahajjud salat. Nobody else is around to see you standing for salat so you have nobody to show off for. So it's just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time where you stand. This is the time where you make dua to Allah. This is the time to cry before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when nobody is around. So do it when nobody is there. Exit yourselves in the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, another fadilat for doing a'mal salihat and for exiting yourselves and doing good deeds when nobody else is doing it. Is that the soul... It has a natural inclination towards its environment. So whenever the environment is evil and bad, the soul automatically is inclined towards evil and bad. And whenever the environment is good, the soul automatically becomes inclined towards good. Take the example of Ramadan. The man who was drinking alcohol for 11 months of the year in Ramadan, he stops. The man who never performed a single salat in his life, he performs salat in Ramadan. And for charity, he never gave it before. In Ramadan is the month where all the amal of salihat is being done. When people themselves, they start to do good, it causes an influence on those who are not so religious as well. They also start to become good. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from this tradition, Allah may explain that when the whole of humanity, they are in ghaflat and they are in unawareness concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you put your soul and you go contrary to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He rewards you tremendously. One tradition in Sahih Muslim, where the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He explains, anyone who engages himself in ibadat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the people are heedless of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is as though He has migrated towards me. Well, let me explain what does this mean. When people are in disobedience to Allah, you yourself are inclined towards disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if at this point in time, you turn around and you say, I'm not going to commit those evil and I'm not going to commit those misdeeds. I'm not going to commit any sin, rather I'm going to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rasul says, it is as though you have migrated to me. Or let me explain. When it is that they are con that they are doing their evil and they are doing their wrong. The Rasul is making a similitude towards the people of Jahili and the people of ignorance. That when everybody are fulfilling their whims and fulfilling their desires, they are engaged in so much wrong, it is reminiscent of the days of Jahiliya where everybody is doing exactly as they wish. However, when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa came with the truth, everybody left the ways that they were upon and they came upon the ways of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa So much so that they were wretched and they were evil and they were bad when they were in the days of ignorance. But when they accepted Islam and turned to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they became great, great and they became phenomenal. So much so that they are termed with radiyallahu anna. Similar is the case if the people are in total ghaflat and unawareness towards Allah. And now you turn around yourself and you come towards the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is as though you have changed your way in the days of ignorance and you have come to the way of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then a third virtue. A third virtue that ulama they explain. If it is you were to do your amal and you were to do your deeds, when people are in ghaflat and people are in unawareness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you become a means of savior towards the entire of humanity. 
Because if everybody stop remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the azab and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to descend and going to come down. The Rasul says in Shaban, people, they are unaware about the greatness of this month. And they are unaware about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, exert yourself in being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can be the means of punishments being averted and punishments being changed. In the Hilya, Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he says, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, anybody who when everybody is heedless, he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he becomes very obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he is like an individual. When all of his comrades have fallen in battle, he remains fighting. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes on to mention, anybody who remains upon the obedience to Allah when everybody is heedless is just like a green tree amidst all trees that are brown and their leaves have fallen due to the cold and due to winter. And then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes on to mention, if you can remain steadfast and you can remain upon the obedience to Allah in this time, then your sins are going to be forgiven and you are going to be rewarded with the reward of every animate and inanimate object that is present on the face of the earth. Such is the reward for being obedient to Allah in a state of heedlessness. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells Usama ibn Zaid, says, oh, Usama, the reason that I exert myself in this month of Shaban is because people are unaware of the greatness of this month of Shaban. And why are they unaware? Because they are between Rajab and they are between Ramadan. So let us be like the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and do some sort of exerting towards the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us start to get punctual with our five times salat. In Ramadan, it's supposed to be the month where ziyadat and increase supposed to actually take place, not for us to meet the bare minimum. Five times salat in masjid, it's the minimum. Ziyadat supposed to occur in Ramadan. Not in Ramadan, we start getting five times salat in masjid. We haven't started to increase as yet. From now, let us start with our salat in masjid. Let us start with regards to our Quran as well. Throughout the entire 11 months of the year, we're supposed to be finishing one Quran. In Ramadan is where the increase is supposed to actually take place. Let us start from now to get punctual with regards to our Quran so that in Ramadan we will not meet the bare minimum, rather increase will actually take place. Let us start getting all of these things in order so when the race of Ramadan actually starts, we will not pull a muscle and we will not strain ourselves. Rather, it's going to be good. We are going to be comfortable. It wouldn't be the first time that we are seeing Surah Yusuf. Rather, it's going to be, it's the 12th time that we are seeing Surah Yusuf for the year. Let us start getting punctual with regards to all of these things. Start getting up for Fajr Salat and coming for Fajr Salat in Masjid. So therefore, getting up for Suhoor in the month of Ramadan becomes easy. Get all of these things incorporated into our lives in the month of Shaban. And as all of the discussion so far, this is the month that people are very, very heedless. Rather, it's the month that people in the back of their minds, it's the time to line before Ramadan actually comes. It's the time to take the break just before Ramadan enters. It's the time to do all these different things. Let it not be like that this year. Let us make a change in this month, in this month of Shaban. As the Rasul says, our amals are presented to Allah in this month. So let our amals be presented and let there be an increase from last year. Let us go closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let this Ramadan that is coming be different from all our Ramadan. Let each and every single day from now until Ramadan be an increase and be a stepping stone towards making this Ramadan burnish and bright. I hope and pray that Allah, He blesses us and He accepts us. He shows us the significance of the month of Shaban and He allows us to meet the month of Ramadan. وَآخِرَ دَعْوَانَ أَنَّ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ أُصَلِّ عَلَيْكَ وَكُلُّ الْوَجُودِ صَلَاةٌ وَشَوْقٌ إِلَيْكَ أُصَلِّ عَلَيْكَ وَكُلُّ الْوَجُودِ صَلَاةٌ وَشَوْقٌ أصلي عليك وكل الوجود صلاة وشوق إليك